You know, me, as that old bloke told me, I forget who his name was, I was about 18, and he said, kid, when you do a radio interview with these DJs, none of them know what the f*** they're talking about. <laughs> let them ask the first question, then, then don't let the beep back in. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, I've had to do it a few times. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have in your story. Well, right, I've you... told, I told Robbie Williams that, I've told Billy Joel that, and they, you know, hey, you want to do a good radio interview? And don't let him back in. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? What's happening, brother? It'll keep you up all night. Oh. So this is one of my favourite interviews from my old radio show called The Red Eye, and it's with uh, music promoter Michael Chug, who's just an absolute legend, and um, it's awesome having him on the show. And I've kept in the embarrassing intros and outros I did on the old show. Um, I hate hearing them back, but uh, hope you enjoy the interview with Michael Chug. She's the milkshake girl, Mini Khalees. Trick me on the red eye for a Friday morning as we go live around the country. Now on Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday night, was it Tuesday night? Early Wednesday morning. Anyway, it was really late at night. I gave Michael Chug a call. It was the day that the Robbie Williams tickets went on sale in Queensland. They'd been on sale in Sydney. And uh, he'd been up that morning since like 6.30 because he did Sunrise, a TV show, and he's pretty tired. But he took the call. I said, come on, man, let's just film something or record something. So, um... Yeah, this is what happened in the interview with Michael Chuck. Okay, on the show, we're very lucky to have him. He's the one and only, he's on the line from Sydney, Michael Chug. How are you, champ? I'm good, Chuggy. How are you, my boy? I'm very well, thank I'm you. I'm call you Chuggy on air. Well, it would be good if you did, seeing as that's my name on the radio. I love it. Yeah, how you been? Yeah, good. That's very, it, good. Mate. very, very busy. Um, it's been a pretty emotional five or six weeks. One of the uh, all-time greats of the music industry, Ian Copeland, who was the guy responsible for the uh, English rock invasion of America in 79, 80, 81, which changed the face of music worldwide, died of cancer last week. Oh. And uh, I flew over for the funeral, so that was pretty emotional. Uh, and then, of course, trying to build the biggest Australian tour ever has been very, very good, exciting, but, gee, it's been draining. I mean, this wonderful entertainer is bringing the biggest show we'll ever see in this country. Are you talking about Robbie Williams? I'm talking about the one and only. Mr. Entertainment. Oh, mate, he's, but he's so good and he's, the music's good, the band's good and he just, he just is one of the greats. Is he a good guy, Chuggy? He he's seems like just guy. a legend guy. He's a lovely guy and he's quite shy. Really? Yeah. Wow. Now, mate, your story, I've uh, bothered you over the years by asking you a million questions, I know, but how did you get involved in music? Uh, I ran a dance for, well, I got involved in music because uh, listening to my dad's records when I was a little boy. Yeah. And, you know, uh, radio was a big thing. And, but uh, my dad was in World War Two, and uh, my nan used to send him uh, real Australian fruitcakes. And the Yanks would just suck it for it. They, they still can't make a decent fruitcake. <laughs> so he used to swap fruitcake when the care pack arrived for um, the latest 33s. My Fair Lady, Fats Waller, Louis Armstrong, wow. Goodman, Fats Herman, uh, Oklahoma, all that stuff. So I, I was listening to that, you know. And those, those fruitcakes and those records crossed somewhere around to Hawaii for about nine more Christmases. <laughs> so I grew up listening, you know, into that, and then Elvis came along, and I really loved that. And until my voice broke, uh, I, w I wasn't a bad singer actually. <laughs> really? I only I did. Uh, I'll never forget. I did the Smile X Club in Launceston once, and they had to record my voice about thirty times. <laughs> that was the uh, that was the month that uh, you know things that happened to boys happened. Anyway, I ran a dance for my cycling club, right? For a charity, and uh, we were raising money for the cycling club. Because growing up in Tasmania, that's about all you had, cycling or Aussie rules. Now, didn't you used to, like, walk dogs and stuff in Tasmania as well when you were younger? No, no, I broadcast dogs. You broadcast I broad dogs? I was a sporting... I called uh, cycling, gallops, uh, dogs, trots, athletics. Wow. Uh, when I was, like, 15. And um, I was doing radio and live on the track. And it was great because I used to get to travel around Tasmania and stay at the secretary's house overnight and fall in love with his daughter. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. So. Oh, yes. Why does that surprise me? Plenty more great stories coming up, including how Frontier Touring started with the great Michael Gudinski. They formed a great partnership that really changed the face of seeing concerts in Australia. That's for sure. Absolute legend. More coming up from Chuggy shortly. But this is one of the great songs from a great Aussie artist, ACDC. It's a long way to the top. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, you can feel the history of Australian music, ACDC, rocking out. It's a long way to the top. A long way to the shop if you want a sausage roll. On the red eye, as we go live around the country for a Friday morning, getting back into our conversation now with Michael Chug from the other night. Uh, I asked him how he, his story, you know, merged into the music and how he started his company. So anyway, and then uh, uh, I ran a dance to Cycling Club. Uh, I was working at the time. I was about well, 6, 15, no, 16. I'd just left school. I was working in a furniture shop and the uh, uh, my other uh, co-junior salesman was a guy called Rodney DeClerc who uh, played in the top band at the time. He later went on to play with the mixtures and very good bass player. Yeah. Anyway, we had the dance with his band who were the top band and another band that I had then ended up managing and we raised about 80 pounds uh, for the Sogan Club and I thought, wow, this is for me. Wow. For the last 80 pounds I saw of about 12 years. <laughs> okay, we had a good time. <laughs> so, if, yeah, that's it. That's You've awesome, man. You've got me on high tonight because... Uh, Things have gone so well today. Well, that's awesome, man. And now we're uh, speaking today because the tickets for Robbie Williams launched in Sydney yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah, on Tuesday, and we did basically we did hundred thousand tickets. Uh, it was all cleaned up by early this morning, right? And we went on sale in Melbourne, and did sixty. Today yeah. we went on sale in Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth, and uh, we sold out uh, in thirty minutes. Is that an awesome feeling for you? Just to, I mean, do you still get that buzz? Because I'm sure you've had a lot of shows where you get the big sold-out signs. Oh, yeah, but, you know, you can never take anything for granted, you know. Um, I believed in Robbie, and one of the great things about Robbie is that, you know, it's like everybody who goes to see Robbie wants to go back. Yeah, he's a pretty inspiring dude. And they take all, the, all everybody else with them, and so he uh, just orders coming from, you know, people I know and people in the industry. Incredible. And it's such a wide demographic. Now, if you had to, like, sum up, like, well, not so much sum up, but, like, go through your years promoting big bands and bringing them to Australia, what would be, like, the chronological order of, like, some of the big names you've brought out? Oh, like, well, you know... Um, like, when was your first big one where you thought, holy shit, I've just brought out, like, a massive well, artist and... Well, I, um, I... When I first moved to Melbourne... Um, I got a job in a blanket warehouse, actually, <laughs> and yes. called Onka Pringer in South Melbourne. Right. And um, I went to a dance in an old broken-down mansion in Balaclava, which is in East St Kilda, uh, which is a big Jewish area of Melbourne. Yeah. And there, there was this huge dance going on, and it was called the Magic Mushroom. Yeah, she was younger than me, and I was like probably 17. So right. He was probably 15. 14 and a half or something, <laughs> no, 15. <laughs> anyway, this lunatic was was running these huge dances in these broken down, closed down mansions. And the police closed him down after one week or maybe on that night, and they'd just move it to another one. So I started, you know, hanging with Michael, and Michael was getting into the chain and all that uh, music which was yet to come. So it was a really good training ground. Anyway, we had an agency called Premier Artist. And, yeah. Uh, at the same time, through the 70s, I was working as a tour coordinator director for Paul Dainty. Right. And, you know, I did Bowie and ABBA. And, and ABBA, in, in fact, uh, is one of two acts that uh, you could compare the demographic of the audiences to what's going on here. Wow. But, you know, it's quite interesting. And uh, anyway, uh, all that, David Bowie, it was an amazing time. And uh, anyway... Fleetwood Mac, wow, Rock Arena. Anyway, uh, I I was in England with Kevin Boric, and uh, this is seventy late seventy eight, and he said, "Oh, when you come and see this band, took them down to Lyceum, and the police were on." Oh man, and rock it, on! It just it was like, whoa, where's this come from? Yeah, great stories, aren't they? There's plenty of them from Michael Chug, one of the absolute legends of Australian music as far as promoting and bringing out bands and all sorts of stuff. He's a Cool, dude. More with him shortly, but this is the song, or one of them you probably would have heard that night. This is The Police, Don't Stand So Close to Me on the Red Eye. 90.9 CFM.